In this week's field of view, we will be investigating the future of space flight. Testing is currently underway by the Department of Space Vessels. Headed by the corporate giant CIG, who now act as the governmental body charged with making the laws concerning how you and I fly around the verse. A fierce debate currently rages in the Spectrum forums. At the heart of it is the proposed implementation of a flight system CIG call interactive mode, or AM. This feature, along with many others is currently being tested in the Arena Commander simulators before it is rolled out into mass production and into your spaceship. Whether you are a veteran pilot, or new recruit to the AI, or just someone hoping to venture out into the black one day, the AIM system will affect how you fly in the verse. And perhaps just as importantly, it will be a factor that might well determine if you live to fly another day should you, by will or fate, so happen to get into a combat situation. Is it safe? Is it compatible with the way you want to fly, or with the ship you want to fly? Or simply will it give your enemies or competitors an advantage? Join us as we explore the potential repercussions the AIM system could have while it remains in testing phase. You will hear from both sides of the AIM debate and will see it in action as we get a chance to test the Arena Commander simulation ourselves. Should AIM stay or should it be scrapped? Before you head out into the verse, let us widen your field of view. Let us start by establishing what interactive mode is. Historically, flight for space vessels, and their ancient predecessors, were controlled by the standardized joystick interface. Even in the simulators, a flight model for pitch and yaw was centered around the movement of a joystick. This could be utilized with any number of control inputs like joysticks or a mouse. Simply put, if I were to pull back on my stick or mouse, I would pitch the spaceship upwards. The further I pushed from center, the greater the rate of turn. In this model, guns will aim in line with the direction the ship is pointed. When using a mouse device, this mode of flight is known as a virtual joystick and has been designated by CIG as relative mode. The alternative mode, and now the default mode, is interactive mode. AM is a combination of two elements, a flight layer, and an aiming layer. In this flight mode, the reticle indicates the movement of the input. Unlike relative mode, or most virtual joysticks, this reticle is not a center point that represents the direction the nose of the ship is pointed. Instead, this reticle is representative of where the mouse pointer is currently positioned. The second element to interactive mode is an aiming layer, on top of the flight layer, that enables the use of gym build weapons. This layer lets the pilot move the reticle as a precise aiming cursor to pinpoint the guns onto the intended target. It is a mouse pointer gimbal mode. With gimbals the guns no longer follow the direction the ship is pointed. They are now bound to the targeting reticle, interfacing with the aiming layer. The result is that wherever the reticle points, so too do the guns. This is combined with a dead zone at the center of the HUD. In this zone, precise aiming is possible without inducing any movement of the ship. When the aiming layer of IAM and gimbals are combined, the flight model is adapted to follow the cursor. The computer ignores the inputs of your own pitch and instead calculates best means required to move the ship to that point. As a result, aiming is thus allowed to supersede flight. It must be noted that the minute a pilot uses locked gimbals or uses fixed mounts, even if the IAM mode is toggled, they are adopting another variation of a virtual joystick. Therefore, the only mode in which interactive mode is active, is when used in the combination mouse, pointer, gimbals. Is there any precedent for such a design decision? As it turns out, yes. As mentioned, historical simulations were more akin to relative mode. One of the ancient simulations, a popular sim, called Wing Commander, follow this model. It could be played with any input, but in all respects, gun tracking was linear to the direction of flight marked with a center reticle. This example is taken from one of the final episodes in the series, entitled Wing Commander 3, Heart of the Tiger. The next example, from Wing Commander Prophecy, demonstrates a flight model where the reticle indicates where the mouse is currently based off center. The reticle is not the precise point for targeting. 
This is a match for when I am mode is toggled with fixed weapons. It must be stressed, this is not true interactive mode. The minute you lock gimbals or use fixed, even if the IM mode is toggled, you are adopting another variation of a virtual joystick. Therefore the only mode in which IM is active is when used in the combination of mouse, aiming pointer, gimbals. A precedent for interactive mode and its aiming layer, can be identified in another sim called Freelancer. Here you can clearly see the reticle is the precise point of aim. It is also evident that the ship follows the reticle with aim dictating flight. We might call it an example of a mouse, pointer, gimbal shooter. Why then is interactive mode so divisive? The proposal to implement the mode both in the arena sims and in our ships has caused a rift for citizens that has gone on for over three years. Both sides have put forward reasons for and against, both waiting for CIG to weigh in and account for their own reasoning behind the decision. The community have approached CIG for comment, but as it stands their response has been, we have our best men on it. Furthermore, the issue has been confused and often dismissed as being one input versus another, much to the annoyance of those who wish to debate and challenge the inclusion of interactive mode. CIG appear to stand by their decision to have both relative and interactive modes, but have they done enough to justify this decision to the citizens they represent? To get a neutral take we turned a developer of a sim called Everspace that runs on a rival platform to the arena commander. Everspace adopts an interactive mode design. Here is what they had to say about that design decision for the Everspace sim. We know that there are many Zim fans out there who own joysticks and might be wondering why there currently is no support. Everspace was specifically designed for mouse and keyboard. It is the recommended way to play, as the game is not a simulation but an arcade space shooter. Like in first person shooters you are going to be strafing a lot and will greatly benefit from precision aiming when using a mouse. The position of Rockfish underscore Andy stems from a sim designed with this specific control input in mind that being mouse. For the M space sim they have made the design choice to adopt an arcade style, where I am fits to that design. The problem CIG have is that they are attempting to have both arcade and simulation coexisting. This is essentially two sims with two differing sets of rules trying to function within a singular design. In a simulator like Arena Commander, where competition is key, such a dichotomy of rules is potentially troubling and could require splitting users by inputs for esports. When we take off in our ships, these contradictory rules may well create more problems than the choices and accessibility CIG so clearly strive for. What then of public opinion? We're better to find some pilots who have been involved in the alpha stages of testing in the simulators, who might be prepared to answer our questions. For me it's about accessibility. It's a pretty easy control method for people to pick up and pilot. It's a fairly fun control method for mouse pilots, and it's not as finicky as a virtual joystick or as frustrating as relative mode. Accessibility equates to a shallow flight model. Interactive mode is not flying, it's pointing. The IM system allows me to use my guns with gimbals. That means I can focus on aiming those guns. You can have gimbals without IM. It's just a damn crutch. What you mean is it lets you increase your time on target with less effort. You say that like it's a bad thing. You do want to win a dogfight, right? Tell me that when the next guy you run into has gimbals and bigger guns than you, and you can't evade. I think IA makes the most of its advantages of using mouse inputs as a pointing device. And let's be fair here, us mouse pilots need every advantage against those stick pilots. They're the ones with the edge. Just look at the arena commander scoreboards. This ain't about controller inputs. No this versus that, enough already. What about if I want to fly with my stick or anything else for that matter? How am I gonna use those gimbals, eh? You wanna use stick, you can. 
They'll give you your damn parody with hitch tracking. You just gotta wait for it to be rolled into service. Don't give me that bull. You know as well as I do that nothing is precise as your mouse input. We get our precision. Sure. But we lose a gun size so we can use those gimbals. Fair and square, best I see. These kind of debates are the same in every pilot hangout in UAE space. What is equally clear is that the two sides of this debate cannot seem to find common ground. Perhaps I can discover some facts for myself in the Arena Commander Simulator. We will start with interactive mode and gimbals. This is the default mode and I am using the default loadout for the Aegis Gladius, that being size 1 guns and gimbals. The first thing I notice is that a pilot can just jump in and fly. The controls are intuitive and feel very close to the other simulations that many will be familiar with, including Space Marine, though that is not a flight based simulation. However, due to the dead zone, input movements closer to the center lacked feedback about the ship. Only on hard turns, where the virtual joystick regains primary position over the aim layer, did I feel in direct control of my ship's pitch, yaw and thrust. Once I'd closed on the target ship the aim layer made aiming my only real focus. Get my pointer reticle on the pip, fire. I was surprised by the time on target and could only imagine the damage per second my weapons were able to achieve. What I did not have to do a lot of was maneuvering to get a better firing solution. Strapping was enough to keep my ship in motion so as to evade. The rest was aiming and in 52 seconds it was all over. Next up we turned the mouse input to relative mode and kept the gladius with the standard loadout. It must be noted that this test had to be repeated while sensitivity curves were programmed into my mouse input. Without such tinkering, I could not just jump into the cockpit and have any hope to fly competitively. Once set up, I did feel more in control of the ship. The guns, even ones with gimbals, were all locked into fixed position, so where I put my crosshair reticle was where I shot. It was a harder practice indeed. I now noticed the effects of thrust and G's forces on my inputs. I found I had to pay equal attention to flight as I did to trying to aim on target. A steep learning curve, most definitely, but it felt more on par with the joystick I am used to flying in my own ships. I imagine that with equal practice and familiarity, there would be no comparison to be made between the use of a stick or mouse in this mode. What I missed that was the precision that gimbals allowed me. My time on target was far lower, which was reflected in the final time of 2.29. Lastly we set up the mouse input in interactive mode, but loaded the gladius with size 2 fixed weapons. This is meant, according to CIG, to be the balance that offsets the precision of interactive mode for pilots running a fixed setup. Let's see how it balances out. Despite having the interactive mode toggled, we are technically using CIG's alternate virtual joystick. It can be told apart due to the dot reticle marking the position of mouse input from center. I must be very clear, that since I cannot interact with the gimbals since the aiming layer is not present, this mode of flight is not a contentious interactive mode that is the cause for debate. Instantly I found this more accessible than the relative mode virtual joystick, principally as I did not have to continuously pick up and move my mouse input on turns. It seems clear that the virtual joysticks need a work. Yet, like relative mode, I felt in control of the ship as I moved the ship to aim on target. The guns followed the center crosshairs and the indicator dot gave me feedback on movement. I could equally feel the effects of the ship on my aim and that aided my sense of emotion. In adding the larger guns my time on target was comparable to relative mode, but the increased damage per second from the weapons meant I was able to complete the challenge in 104. So have CIG got the balance right? Let us then turn to two advocates on either side of the issue and let them try to offer the answers. A proponent for interactive mode is Malagos of the infamous Renegade Squadron. He offered a written statement on interactive mode not being a problem but a core element of the sim. Let's be clear, interactive mode is objectively not a balance problem and is clearly part of the ship design for a reason. I absolutely sympathize with players that expected a space sim that was more of a hardcore sim. But I want the ships in the verse to be more than that. If anything, we need to work on increasing joystick access to gimbals, not removing them from one control scheme.
let's look at some facts, balance concerns. With the current 60% weapon scaling between sizes, a fixed weapon pilot will beat a gimbaled pilot in most 1v1 fights. For example, when I, as a gimbaled pilot, fight top fixed pilots like Darkstar or Cerrito, I do not win, although it will be close. I am simply isn't some overpowered control scheme ruining the game. It's easy to balance and already has been. With lower time on target, fixed weapon pilots can use bursty weapons that have higher DPS over a shorter period of time. This furthers their advantage, making the time on target delta more like 1, 1 1.75, meaning that a gimbaled pilot needs 75% more time on target to break even. Recent changes to gimbal slew rate, down to 35, 15, and 10 deg slash s in many cases, further limit IM, reducing time on target and snap time. Reduced speeds greatly increase the ability of fixed weapon pilots to hit, which takes away the biggest advantage of the mouse already, last centimeter or last inch precision. The analogy is that if I'm a triathlete and a great swimmer, and you greatly reduce the swimming portion of the triathlon, it hurts my chances. So this is more balance between fixed and gimbal. Large ships too slow to rotate onto their targets, large ships like the Connie, Karak, Freelancer, or Redeemer all come equipped with a large amount of gimbaled weapons, including those under pilot control. I don't think I'm alone in assuming that it's much more fun to fly plus shoot than just fly. Let's face it, aiming, shooting, and hitting a target is satisfying on a very basic level. Visceral ship control AM is not point to fly, it is a virtual joystick. In actuality, relative mode is point to fly, since the ship stops rotating and goes to the cursor. Any AM pilot that just aims and doesn't fly is extremely easy to kill because they go in nice, straight lines. Additionally, IM allows the player to be connected to the ship through both aiming and flying. Basically, if this verse is going to be more than just a really small group of simulator enthusiasts, the ships are going to need fun and intuitive mouse controls. CIG has stated on multiple occasions that IM isn't going away either, so we are left with how to make sure everything is balanced. In my opinion, they should remove the N1 size penalty and just have gimbals be a reduction of like 30-40% DPS that way weapon size balance isn't so crucial. Standing in opposition to the current interactive mode is another commentator on the nets, who goes by the call sign Yaras. Interactive mode presents many issues to pilots, but for this discussion I'm going to focus on just a few issues. In the verse, there are many ships that have gimbal weaponry that cannot be changed out for fixed weapons. Examples of this are the Avenger, the Freelancer series, Starfarers, etc. With interactive mode, there are many pilots who will be unable to fully access the weaponry of their vessels if using anything other than this method. Yes, they can technically use them, but at a significantly reduced effectiveness that is not comparable. But the problem extends farther than this. Many of these issues also extend to larger ships that have the option to change out for larger fixed weaponry. The reason gimbals are important for these larger vessels is that they lack the maneuverability to target smaller vessels that may be attacking them. Gimbal weaponry provides them a better defense against vessels such as these. Larger weapons don't mean anything if you can't line up a shot on the target that is attacking you. Because of issues like rotation rates being so divergent between ship classifications, it would be effectively impossible to balance a system like this with weapon size. Also, if a pilot is focused mainly on aiming, piloting becomes a secondary concern. Tunnel vision has killed many pilots in the past. The primary concern of a pilot should be the maneuvering of this vessel to protect from collisions and to acquire an advantageous position and then to achieve a firing solution. Many ships come equipped with dedicated turret gunners or Rio seat operators. It is these individuals that should be concerned with controlling weaponry, keeping the pilot focused on the task of piloting. For this reason, what the pilot needs to have implemented is a universal system. Using existing tracking technology, we can track a target based upon their CS, ER, and or IR signature. Weapons would remain in a fixed forward state until a lock is achieved. At that point, the weapons would begin to track towards the target. A system such as this would not require weapons to be reduced in size due to other mitigating factors that could be used to create balance. This would further eliminate the issue such as size 1 guns having little to no value currently in the verse, due to the damage scaling required to make the current gimbal system work. 
Of course, the downsides would be that since these weapons are indeed on gimbal mounts, they will be less stable, invoking more weapon spread from recoil. The target lock itself can be countered by locked vessels maneuvering out of the target cone and or using countermeasures. The effectiveness of the system would also be modified by factors such as environmental and e-war devices. Ships that utilize higher-end tracking devices, such as the Hornet Tracker, will be better at utilizing this technology due to their more advanced sensors. They could also transmit this data out to others in their wing, enabling a triangulation effect, allowing other friendly pilots faster locking and weaponry. Utilizing the computer technology of the day, I believe we can achieve a system that is not only universal, but logical in implementation. We just need to be willing to step back and try something different, and not put this idea of pilot control gimbals on a sacred pedestal. Evidently there is just one point both Malagos and Yaris agree on. That being, that better access is needed for gimbals to pilots using inputs other than the mouse. Neither seem to agree on the overall purpose of the arena commander and ship design. Neither they, nor the community as a whole can agree if what CIG has built is a shooter or a simulation. Are CIG attempting to unify these disparate styles? If so, there are no historical examples of this being achieved with success. After all, how can two methods with different rules and expectations be unified? If, as Malagos stated, AIM is here to stay, then solutions must be considered to give equal access to all inputs for the gimbal mechanic. Furthermore, how can CIG merge the proposed deep and complex systems with the accessible arcade combat that is present in the Arena Commander as it stands? The Arrow solution is just one that has been proposed so as to allow all inputs to use Jimbo's universality and with parity. Other community proposals range from decreased slew rates or accuracy on gym build weapons to full automation to variations to rate of fire and cooling of weapons. But are these solutions enough? We must of course consider the bigger picture. Aside from input parity, what else could I am affect? The answers have already begun to transpire as CIG has been forced to adjust the top speed and accelerations of ships to compensate for the time on target that I am allows. There are fears of what some in the piloting community call, Twitch, style flying where precision aim dominates over flying skill. This is conflated by the issue of damage per second being the overriding factor when setting up a ship's loadout. So called, chasing the meta, means that most top pilots forgo their preferred choice of weapons or mixed loadouts in order to have the guns that give the highest damage per second. This results in monoboating, where weapons with the same projectile speed are combined so the ship's pit better lines up. Others are concerned that CIG have created a system design that will constantly trip them up as they integrate new systems into our ships. One such system is the currently being worked on turrets. Another concern is that as IAM moves into larger ships that should necessitate numerous crew and gunners to be viable, that IAM will allow the pilot to have more control of the ship than is realistic. By slaving turrets the pilot could have a mass of weapons at their disposal. The aiming layer of IAM will then grant them precision to make those weapons effective. CIG must decide in the arena commander, and indeed out in the verse, if piloting means flying our ships or it means having the ability to aim our guns. As it stands the focus is unclear and imbalance is the result. It is our wish that CIG stand up and take a seat at the table of this debate. If we are to exist in this universe together as citizens, is it not crucial that we all understand and agree on the rules, even those surrounding our ships? We are not all combat pilots, we are not all pirates, we are not all cargo haulers. We are any of these things at any time we chose. If we wish to fight on foot or in space we should have the ability to defend ourselves fairly. We should be able to feel the joy of flight if we so chose, knowing that our ships grant us that to the fullest extent a pilot should desire. Isn't that what it is about? Emotion, control, and all the complexity we chose to throw at ourselves in this expansive verse around us. So I say to you CIG, come talk with your citizen about interactive mode. Be open. Give the pilots of this verse the same fidelity we see everywhere else. Because remember, Arena Commander is just a game. The verse that's something else entirely.